All right, guys, we have another challenge lock from Jillian up at University of Rochester. She calls this one the Wilson Challenge, and she also told me that she's naming these after different places on the university campus. Anyway, we do have a mummy challenge or a, a key, uh, and it is, of course, a challenge lock. And you can see Jillian has been working on some alien technology. This has definitely been messed with on the top here, but it doesn't matter. We're going to get in this thing. What we do need is a vice, and let's pick out a, let's grab a pick. Let's first take a look at this. Um, Corbin rust winds are not too bad. You can, you can uh, uh, tension them from the bottom, but because of the warding, sometimes that's a little bit of a problem. Getting a pick in is not a problem, though. Generally, I use something like this guy. I'm going to use a medium hook. This one is 23,000 from the Praxis kit. Um, in fact, let me grab him. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stick with him. The reason I get a thicker hook, a thicker material is because I can go from that ledge, and you can see 23,000 fits up in there, and there's plenty of wiggle room. It's not dragging at all. You can all see that flexing a little bit, so now we got some security pins in there. All right, let's see what Jillian's got in this thing. I am going to use top of the keyway. And let's see if I can find a good one here. Usually the 50,000th one, maybe, oh yeah, it does, okay. So that's what we're after. I'm going to turn it a little bit so maybe if you can see if we get some feedback. And I am going to pick from that right ledge. The bottom is going to remain wide open. Not going to do anything down there. You know what, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and go with a medium hook instead of the short hook. Simply because it looks like I have room there. So if I can find it, here we go. Use this guy. Also, still 23,000. Still from the Praxis kit. Because it looks like he'll fit. Maybe a little tight. I got a really strong spring back there. Anyway, we'll worry about that when we get to it. All right, counterclockwise, why not? Slide it all the way in. Light tension. And let's go to town. Okay, that was... The last pin six, pin five, a little click, and it turned a little bit. I am getting some counter rotation there. Come out of there. Maybe I should go with the other pick. This guy's a little bit tight in there. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the other one. Don't second guess yourself. Got some crunching going on in there. Got a little bit of fault set working, but I got no counter rotation. Okay, that was pin three. Again, it didn't help me though. There we go, that was pin two. Got a little bit of a fault set going now. Oh, goodness. That's a very light spring. I might have just overset pin one. Saw that counter rotation. He's got a spool element to him. Okay, there we go. Pin three again. I'm back into the fault set. Now I got a very, very deep fault set. Okay, I get some counter rotation off of six, but I can't quite, there's not enough rise on this one. So I'll go back to the medium hook and see if I can reach around back there. If I can get him in past that last, uh, second to last pin, get in there. There we go. Okay, I got a click on him. And I think we got either that or very deep fault set. All right, so we definitely got a T-pin. We got a number six. Feels like he's got a spoolish element to him. But let's see what kind of high tech that they have at the University of Rochester that Jillian's using against us. I do have that key. Let's lock him up. Now that's weird. Well, I guess it is. It didn't look like it was vertical, but I guess it is. I looked at the actuator, and he's perfectly centered. Anyway, 
Um, it just looks like masking tape. So, grab this guy, just cut it off. This is not like some of that black nasty some of you guys wrap the tapes with. All right, looks like some home filing on this thing. That is it's pretty rustic. Okay, it does work. It does grab as well. It doesn't want to go counterclockwise. I don't know why. And it does grab sometimes going clockwise, but it does work. So it's valid challenge lock. Despite this ugly looking key. All right, let's let's go ahead and gut him. Let's see what we got here. I'm expecting something bad to happen any moment. Um, a little while ago I was picking an LOB lock and this bird came up and was literally attacking the window, pecking at it. Now it's slightly mirrored on the outside, so I'm not I'm pretty sure he wasn't trying to get me. He's probably looking at his own reflection, but uh, there was that. And then a little earlier, I actually saw some deer out in the backyard. Get off of there. And they were headed for my garden. So I went out and started waving my arms from the patio, and they totally ignored me. Just looked at me like I was some kind of doofus. All right, we're going to rotate that. So then when I ran at them, they took off running and they ran exactly where I didn't want them to run, which was right through the middle of my garden, and they destroyed half of my tomato plants. All right, slide this dude out. So I got to be a little bit less excitable around here. It doesn't pay off. All right, I don't see any weirdness here. Everything looks normal. That second pin looks like he's grounded, just filed off, but he does look like he fits. I don't know why that was having so much trouble rotating. I expected to see one of the pins cut to not quite the right height. So let's see what Julian's got here. We got a standard. We got a standard. 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 Come on, man. Oh, there we go. Finally. All right. We have a, it is an ASA pin that's been, looks like filed down to act as a key pin. So that's what I thought was maybe the spool element. Um, I don't see anything. It looks like on, on chamber number one, I think that's just, yeah, that's just a manufacturing mark. That's not any kind of undercut. So it's completely stock core. Let's see what kind of magic she's got hiding up here. Okay, so we got an ASA pin, chamber one. We have a homemade spool with a rounded edge. That, uh, Jillian, that would have made it just a little bit easier to hit the shear line on that one because we had a standard key pin and then a rounded edge, which really widens up the shear line. Number three, we have a T pin. Let me lay him down. Eh, I can hold him up here without hurting myself. So that's what was sticking down in three. That's what gave us that really deep fault set. Number four. <laughs> this is a side pin for an ASA. It is not meant to be a, a driver or a key pin, but Jillian has fit that in there on us. All right, number five, another T pin. Uh, another ASA that's been modified. The small diameter was pointing down which would act as a T-pin. And the last one, let's go from the other side. Barely sticking up there. Really we oh, look at that. It just shot out of there. So he was a little caught up, and there's another one of those uh, um, side pin. These are finger pin, and if you look at it, it has a gate. And on this one, the gate is dead center where the finger pin would fit in an in a ASA, like a V10. Let's take a look at that other one and see where his gate is. His gate is also right in the middle. So the gate can be located anywhere. Again, these are not intended to be drivers, but hey, it worked. All right, let me go ahead and pull. The springs do look different. 
So this would be six. And that was kind of hung up there. And five. It is a standard centered. Four. Also a standard centered. Three. Okay, so it looks like so far the only different one is going to be that last one in chamber six. Yep. And one more. And I need to look in the Bible because I just noticed this. We have some threads up in here. Let's get a light on it. All right, chambers. Well, let me just put it this way. Every single chamber has threads. Bar none. Every single one of those threaded. So that's why the top was pulled off. Let's see if I can just slide that off of there without doing too much damage. Give you a look. I have replacements. That's the reason I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. I can put a brand new one on there so that the chambers won't be partially uncovered if I can get it off. So there we go. That's a little bit better view. This would be an excellent canner to put some some uh, threaded allen screws in. In fact, I might do that instead and turn this into a training lock before I send it back to Jillian and make her job a little easier on challenge lock number three. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Appreciate your, <laughs> appreciate your attention. Stay safe. Stay legal, Jillian. I appreciate it. So let's see what else the University of Rochester has to offer. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.